Good morning. May the Lord be with you. This is the 18th Sunday after Holy Trinity. The order of service is Divine Service Setting 3, uh, found on page 184. And our opening hymn is 797. We, uh, we begin our service with that hymn.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. O oh, Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death, of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the Word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in this stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Give peace, O Lord, to those who wait for you, and let the prophets be proven faithful. Hear the prayer of your servants, according to the blessing of Aaron upon your people. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they be secure who love you. For my brothers and companions' sake, I will say, peace be within you. For the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your good. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning is now and will be forever. Amen. Give peace, O Lord, to those who wait for you, and let your prophets be proven faithful. Hear the prayer of your servants, according to the blessing of Aaron upon your people. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, good will toward men. We praise Thee, we bless Thee, we worship Thee, we glorify Thee, we give thanks to Thee for Thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that take 
takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, because without you we are not able to please you, mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. The Old Testament for the 18th Sunday after Holy Trinity is written in the fifth book of Moses, commonly called Deuteronomy, the 10th chapter. And now, oh, and now, Israel, what does the Lord your God require of you? But to fear the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways, to love him, to serve the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, and to keep the commandments and statutes of the Lord, which I am commanding you today for your good. Behold, to the Lord your God belong heaven and the heaven of heavens, the earth with all that is in it. Yet the Lord set his heart in love on your fathers and chose their offspring after them, you above all people, as you are this day. Circumcise, therefore, the foreskin of your heart, and be no longer stubborn. For the Lord your God is God of gods and Lord of lords, the great, the mighty, and the awesome God, who is not partial and takes no bribe. He executes justice for the fatherless and the widow, and loves the sojourner, giving him food and clothing. Love the sojourner, therefore, for you were sojourners in the land of Egypt. You shall fear the Lord your God. You shall serve him and hold fast to him. And by his name you shall swear. He is your praise. He is your God who has done, all for, you, who has done for you these great and terrifying things that your eyes have seen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. I was glad when they said to me, Let us go to the house of the Lord. Peace be within your walls, And security within your towers. The epistle is written in St. Paul's first letter to the church in Corinth, the first chapter. Paul called by the will of God to be an apostle of, Jesus, of Christ Jesus and our brother Sosthenes to the church of God that is in Corinth, to those sanctified in Christ Jesus, 
called to be saints together with all those who in every place call upon the name of the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ, both their Lord and ours. Grace to you and peace from God, our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that was given you in Christ Jesus, that in every way you were enriched in him, in all speech and in all knowledge, even as the testimony about Christ was confirmed among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of your, our Lord Jesus Christ, who will sustain you to the end, guiltless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, by whom you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. We stand. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 22nd chapter. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together. And one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which is the great command, commandment in the law? And he said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Now while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them a question, saying, What do you think about the Christ? Whose son is he? They said to him, The son of David. He said to them, How is it then that David, in the Spirit, calls him Lord, saying, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If then David calls him Lord, how is he his son? And no one was able to answer him a word. Nor from that day did anyone dare to ask him any more questions. This is the gospel of the Lord. Confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who is spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. O God, because without you we are not able to please you, mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Apart from Jesus, you do not please God. No one does. That is why we prayed what we prayed just now in the collect, earlier in the service and just now. This word of God to you in this sermon is to bring this prayer to sit home, to bring it home in your hearts that you might acknowledge it to, in fact, be true. We need this preaching because we don't believe it. We don't believe that God isn't pleased with us. I certainly don't. I don't live like it. Before God, I'm constantly thinking I do the best I can and God's okay with that. I'm cert and I'm certain we all think the same thing, too. The truth of God's word is clear, however. He's pleased with nothing anyone does apart from him. No matter how hard we try, everything we do is damnable. Everything. For everything we do is sinfully done because we are sinners. The Pharisees in their thinking were no different than you and me. They gathered together after Jesus had shut up the Sadducees and in their prideful arrogance they thought that their questions would be better and more pleasing to God. They wanted to test Jesus. They thought by trapping him and showing him to be the, thought, or the fraud that they thought he was then they would gain favor with God. What foolish men they were. Jesus shut them up just as well as he did the Sadducees. First, Jesus answers the lawyer's question, which is rare. He usually responds with a question of his own for them. But here Jesus answers them. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor in place of yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. This answer of Jesus isn't, it, it, this answer of Jesus is setting up the Pharisees for a great and mighty fall. Using their pride and arrogance against them, Jesus puffs them up. He tees them up just to crush them right down the fairway of his perfect game. The Pharisees heard these words of Jesus and thought well of themselves. They actually assumed that they had kept these two commandments, or at least, at the very least, thought that they had kept them well enough to get the job done. The last thing they would have ever thought about was fearing God in view of these two commandments. They thought that God was pleased with them, even if it was just for their best efforts. Oh, how Jesus crushes them. What do you think about the Christ, he asks. Whose son is he? They said to him, the son of David. He said to them, how is it then that David in the spirit calls him Lord, saying, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If then David calls him Lord, how is he his son? And no one was able to answer him a word. Nor from that day did anyone dare to ask him any more questions. Everything in the Old Testament, the Law and the Prophets, it's about one thing, or rather one man, the Christ. It is about the promised seed of the woman, the Messiah of Genesis 3. It is about the Christ coming to rescue God's chosen people from their bondage and to once and for all kick the enemy's butt and deliver the promised land. 
Yet what Jesus said about the commandments of God, that on these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets, strikes the Pharisees square and true. And Why is that? Because the Christ was to come to do what they thought he was to do, but they didn't think that what he, had, what he was coming to do had anything to do with God's command. At least not as they thought. Without the commandments, there is no need for the Christ, the anointed one. The Pharisees failed to see that the enemy wasn't the Romans or other Gentiles. It was themselves, as sinners who sin. They failed to see that they were in bondage to sin and its wage death. They needed to be shown, shown that they were dead and needed a savior. A savior who would resurrect them. If you remember, the Sadducees denied the resurrection. The Pharisees, who thought themselves better, also denied the resurrection, but in their own way, because they denied the Christ. They didn't want to be the sinners in need of salvation. No, they wanted to be the saviors. They wanted to be saviors of themselves only. They didn't want to be sinners. They didn't want to die and be given life by Christ who would, out of love, forgive their sins freely and then resurrect them to new life. They liked their life the way it was. They could take care, credit for it. They liked thinking of themselves as pleasing to God and worthy of God's salvation. What one thinks about the Christ tells a lot about what one thinks about themselves and others. If in our minds Jesus loves us and accepts us for who we are and how hard we try, then we do not think of ourselves the same way the Bible says God thinks of us and our works. And for this we must repent. It's time for a mind and heart change once again for the umpteenth time. We must die, even daily. We must no longer be as the Pharisees who try hard. We must do nothing but be dead. To confess. To confess and say back what God's word says. So we must also then listen and not get in the way. Listen to the Lord who says to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. The law and the prophets depend on the commandments of God because if there is nothing wrong, nothing sinful, if we are not sinners, then there is no need for Christ. There's no need for Jesus. Thanks be to God, the enemy has indeed been put under Jesus' feet. The enemy of death and its champion, the devil, is defeated. He lay crushed under the heel of Christ, the Christ who died on the cross for us, for you to set us free once and for all. It is finished. Your lives of sin against God and his commandments are forgiven by Jesus. You, the sinner, are declared innocent before God. It is his declaration, not your work. The commandments no longer now, because of what Christ has done, they no longer accuse you and usher you to hell. No, Christ, the Lord of heaven and earth, your Lord, makes you worthy. He makes you acceptable to God. You who are dead in sin are resurrected to new life, a life you did not earn. There is no trying hard in God's kingdom. Nothing you do is pleasing to God, yet everything Jesus does and has done for you is pleasing to God, and he has made it yours. Jesus has done it all for you and for your salvation. As we started this sermon with today's collect, we will end with it. 
O oh God, because without you we are not able to please you, mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. The only way to, please, to be pleasing to God is through Jesus, which the Holy Spirit makes known to us, to you. It is to be a forgiven sinner, a sinner forgiven for Jesus' sake. Our enemy is sin, death, and its champion, the devil. Our Lord and Savior, our champion, is Jesus, who has nothing to give except forgiveness, life, and salvation. He has crushed the enemy under his foot and now lives to tell you that you are victorious. You are free from the enemy too. The son of David has slayed the greater Goliath. Sin, death, and the devil are no more. You who are in Christ Jesus, baptized into his holy name, are well-pleasing to the Father. You now have eternal life. And you will rise again on the last day. You now live in faith toward God and in fervent love toward one another. Those two commandments, to love, your, love God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and to love your neighbor in place of yourself, is kept. Kept even by you, as you no longer live, but Christ lives in you. The one who does it for you. In Jesus' name. Amen. We stand for prayer. Now the peace of God that passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. We stand for prayer. In our prayers this morning, we continue to pray for Cheryl as she, uh, Krieger, as she undergoes cancer treatment. And we also keep in our prayers Jean Appleman uh, and the whole Ellen home as they are currently under quarantine for a COVID outbreak. 
We also keep in our prayers the aunt of David Racer, Suzanne, Suzanne Taylor, who fell asleep in the Lord this last week. Let us pray. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord God of Israel, we give you thanks for Jesus Christ, David's Son and Lord, on whom hang all the law and the prophets, reconciled to you by his righteousness. Lead us as disciples to make a godly beginning in the love of you and our neighbor. Lord, in your mercy. Give peace, O Lord, to those who wait for you, and let your preachers be proven faithful. Preserve your church, and let all Christians be glad to enter into the house of the Lord. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Bless the homes of your people, O Lord, that husbands and wife, husband and wife may honor their vows of love and fidelity to each other. Unite parents and children in love and affection, that their lives together may be examples to the world of your goodness and love. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Almighty God, graciously uphold our president and those in high positions of authority. Guard them from every evil. Keep them from using their power to self, for selfish gain, that they would serve for the common welfare of all. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Eternal Father, our Lord Jesus Christ is seated at your right hand, even now subject, subjecting every enemy under his feet. Give this certain confidence to all, to us and to all your saints in the veil of tear, this veil of tears, to the needy, the troubled, the joyful, and the expectant, especially Shel Krieger, Jean Appleman, and all those whom we now name in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you are our praise. You are our God. You do great and marvelous things, both seen and unseen, especially your saints throughout the mystery, uh, establish your saints through the mystery of Christ's blessed sacrament, which delivers the forgiveness of our sins, strengthen us by your word and body and blood, in right fear and love of you, and in selfless love and service toward our neighbor. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Gracious Father, your Son is the resurrection and the life, in whom all the dead will rise and through whom your elect will live eternally in your presence. Give comfort to all who mourn, especially the family of S Suzanne Taylor, David Racer's aunt. Give them comfort that they might not grieve as those who have no hope, but as those whose hope is in the crucified and risen one. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. All these we, all this we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, through him, with him, and in him. O God, almighty Father, in the, <clears throat> in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and sound, you tarry, that we should at all times and in all places Give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who out of love for his fallen creation humbled himself by taking on the form of a servant, becoming obedient unto death, even death upon a cross, risen from the dead, he has freed us from eternal death 
and given us life everlasting. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
takes away the sin of the world. body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith throughout this life and the life to come. Depart in God's peace, your sins are forgiven. the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith, throughout this life and the life to come. Depart in God's peace, your sins are forgiven.
Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you with the ones you made through this life and life to come. We bow you to God's peace. Now the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you with the one true faith throughout this life and the life to come. We bark in God's peace. Your sins are forgiven. Amen.
Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Let us pray. O oh God, the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and to be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. You may be seated. 
Lord's blessings to you again. This is the 18th Sunday after Trinity. A few announcements to bring to your attention. If you have not already done so, please RSVP for the Hog Roast and Reformation Hymn Sing. Uh, the program is, the first draft is been, uh, has been printed uh, and is now going through the review process because I wrote it. Um, um, I'm glad I got it done early. I've never, I usually don't do that. So, uh, but uh, this, I'm terrified of this. I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll be honest. It gives me a little anxiety. Uh, uh, but uh, it, we're, we'll get it ready for, uh, for the day. We do have our readers. The narrator is Pastor Brenna Christensen, uh, headmaster and associate pastor of Peace Lutheran Church and Academy in Sussex. Um, he's a baby pastor, so be kind to him. Um, and, uh, but he will do a well, good job. And if you have any questions about classical Lutheran education, he's the guy to talk to. Uh, so he uh, is uh, taught in a classical Lutheran school setting before, as well as now running a school uh, in, in his first year. Also uh, for Luther, unfortunately, Pastor Kilps is out of town that weekend, but we do have the uh, very distinguished uh, Pastor John Berg, who is uh, pastor of Trinity uh, Lutheran Church and School in Sheboygan who will be filling the role of Luther in our uh, program this year. Uh, he has done this before, and he was here last year, so uh, we look forward to having him uh, be Luther this year. So if you haven't RSVP'd, please do so. Um, the, the sooner we uh, get all those names together, we, the better we can plan for that day. Uh, also, Mark, on the back of your bulletin, uh, there was a little error in, in, in scheduling. Uh, LWML is on Thursday night, not Tuesday night, at 6.30, right? Still at 6.30, right? Yeah, still at 6.30. Thursday night, 6.30, LWML ML meeting. Um, also this week, I forgot, there is no uh, uh, Old Testament catechesis on Monday night. I forgot to tell the class because I will be in Middleton, Wisconsin for pastor's conference. Um, and so I won't be here uh, unless you want to come to Madison. Uh, with me, um, I will not be here. So no Old Testament catechesis tomorrow night uh, that w I will not be here. Uh, so I think everybody who's in the class is here today. So we, so mark that. Yeah, it, 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 it's on the schedule is not being there, right? I think it is. Um, so I handed out the schedule at the beginning here. I just forgot to look at it. So, um, so I will be at pastor's conference uh, starting uh, noon tomorrow uh, till about noonish on Wednesday, and so if you have any pastoral emergencies, do not hesitate to use my cell phone. Um, I will have it with me. It's kind of glued to me, so please call. Do not hesitate. Just because I'm in Madison, don't, uh, don't think that you, I, I won't come, because I will, because that's what God has called me to do, and I, I welcome it. Um, otherwise, you could also call one of the deacons. They also have my number, and Jamie has it, though she's not the secretary anymore, so, but, but, uh, so, uh, please do that, and uh, I look forward to getting back to you, be, being with you for the divine service on Wednesday night. Uh, this week, we will be celebrating the Feast of St. Luke, the Apostle, or, yes, the Apostle, the Evangelist. There you go. Get it right. Are there any other announcements at this time? None? Seeing none, may God keep you safe in the palm of his hands until we meet again. God bless.